welcome. Welcome to Pirates of the Dot Dot Dot. I'm Brian, your host, and uh, I am writing a book about pirates of the golden age of piracy. And this episode is about one of my characters who is also a, uh, a famous character from this time of history, um, Black Caesar. Black Caesar is a pirate originating from Africa that uh, is widely known as a pirate who had joined up with Blackbeard sometime in the 1718s and was um, with Blackbeard at the end. And um, if you've listened to the show, I don't like to talk about the end because my pirates uh, don't have an ending in our book. He will continue on and have adventures along with the rest of them from the golden age of piracy. Uh, but what I want to do is I want to give you some character background. Some of it is, uh, is fact. Some of it is uh, maybe fiction. Uh, some of it is uh, conjecture and rumors. Um, but uh, all of them have such rich uh, stories and histories um, about them that uh, I thought I would do a series of podcasts that talk about who these characters are so that you'll be really familiar with them if uh, at some point in time you want to read my book. So Pirates of the Dot 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 is uh, the uh, the holder name for the book. Um, it will change. I'm, you, and I'm doing that until I completely decide on on the title. And for the moment, uh, that uh, that that title of the podcast is what I'm sticking with. Black Caesar. Black Caesar. Okay. He was um, he was rumored to be an African chieftain or maybe African royalty. And during this time, uh, really from the 1700s to the 1800s, the slave trade was running rampant, coming from Africa and heading towards um, the Americas to sell the slaves. So um, Black Caesar was known for his huge size and his immense strength, as well as a keen intelligence, which is why he was a chieftain of his tribe. So Black Caesar had evaded capture from many of the slavers that were seeking men such as him. He had evaded them for quite some time, but um, eventually uh, Black Caesar was captured when um, he and about 20 of his warriors were lured onto a ship um, by a trader. And they showed him this watch and the trader promised it to show him and his warriors more objects. And unfortunately they were all too happy um, to uh, come on board and see what these things were um, being enticed. He also, uh, the, the trader also enticed him with uh, food and uh, musical instruments, silk scarves, jewels. So when Caesar and his men um, discovered what was happening, they attempted to charge their captors, but then they were driven back because these traders, uh, the sailors on the ship were well armed using swords and pistols. And uh, so once they were all captured, they were locked into the hold of the ship and then they were on this voyage to the Americas. Um, for a while there, Black Caesar, he would not accept any food or water from these men. But eventually he befriended one of the sailors and, um, and he was the only one uh, that Black Caesar would accept um, substance from. And um, so uh, uh, weeks later, as they're sailing, they, they are arriving around the coast of Florida and a sudden hurricane um, basically just started just destroying the ship against the reefs and um, recognizing that the ship was about to be destroyed. This sailor friend um, snuck below decks and freed Black Caesar. Uh, the two of them forced the captain and the crew into a corner, most likely at gunpoint, and then boarded one of the longboats with ammunition and other supplies. Um, it, the sad part is, is uh, it was just the two of them. They basically left everybody else there. Uh, the wind and the waves pushed them to shore, and they, um, they waited out the storm. And apparently, those two were the only survivors of this doomed ship. So... Um, at that point, Black Caesar and his sailor friend, they turned to a life of piracy. 
and they started out small. What their what they the, their uh, their gig was, um, they would pose as shipwreck sailors to ha uh, the hail the passing vessels that were coming by, and um, once somebody came aboard to uh, or came on shore to help them out um, and pick them up, uh, these two men once they're on board would drop their disguise, rob the ship, and then take back the loot um, to their hideout. And this was going on for years. These two, they, they built up a crew that was doing this. And um, the, the, it was a great ploy that they kept utilizing again and again. And so over the years, they just were able to amass this great big fortune. Now, it is, it, uh, it is interesting because there are many... <laughs> You know, in, in popular fiction, uh, pirates are always burying their treasure. Well, that is completely false from what uh, the history has shown, except in Black Caesar's case, they were burying their treasure during, you know, throughout the, uh, the Keys of uh, Florida, mostly um, on uh, Elliott Key. And um, they were the only, I guess there's probably other ones, but they were the most prominent pirates that actually were burying the loot to keep it away from people finding it. Um, so soon they were using um, the uh, the supplies and ammunition that they were taking, and they just um, got their bigger and bigger crew to um, join in on this gig with them. So um, everything was running along great for years until well, unfortunately, there was a falling out, and this happened because of a love triangle. Um, his friend, the, I, there's no name for his friend, the one that had uh, helped him out and became his partner in piracy, brought a woman um, to the key, to uh, the, the key was uh, Elliot Key. So they, he brought this woman to Elliot Key, and um, the two men both fell in love with this woman, and that didn't go well. <laughs> they basically had um, a quarrel over it. They couldn't stop arguing over this woman. And then eventually it led to a duel where Black Caesar ended up killing his longtime best friend. Um, so then once he was gone, then, you know, he gathered his own crew and he started attacking ships that were traveling um, up along the coast of Florida, in, you know, from the West Indies. And, um, you know, from that point on, he was, you know, a, a, a pirate captain, you know, taking ships, uh, running a crew, and uh, was very successful at it. Now, in the absolute history of this, here's where things become a little muddled, right? So... In 1718, we have stories and accounts of Black Caesar being a part of Blackbeard's crew. Now, they were in the same area, and um, it is possible it's the same man, but there have been now evidence that this Black Caesar that was with um, Blackbeard was actually a slave that was owned by a man named Tobias Knight of North Carolina before he became a pirate. So there could be two Black Caesars, the one in the Keys who had escaped and did all of this, you know, amazing amount of piracy for years along that area, and the slave called Black Caesar that was with Blackbeard as his first lieutenant. Um, so uh, no one knows exactly if... Uh, which one of those stories is true. Um, they, they both happened, but who knows which is the real Black Caesar that was with Blackbeard. Um, in, in my book, um, we're just combining these, these two men into the Black Caesar that all of the, uh, the stories that if you've you know, read stories and seen stories about Blackbeard and his, um, his crew members, uh, Black Caesar is uh, his confidant, his, his first mate, his quartermaster, and he definitely plays that role um, with uh, with Blackbeard. So um, that's where we're going with this. Uh, another note 
on this is further in history, there is even another black Caesar that was a pirate uh, more in the, in the later 1800s. So definitely not the same characters. Uh, so um, I'm almost, let me think about this. I've got, um, I'm at like, 84 85,000 words on this book so i'm really close i and i and this the story is coming to a close so i'm i'm getting ready to um decide on the title of it and uh and then it'll go through um an editing process so it's still a lot of time before this book comes out but I, I, it's exciting because I, I feel really really close to finishing this once again i think i told on another earlier podcast that uh october 31st is my deadline i think i'm going to beat that it's it's uh, september 15th i believe that i will complete this um at least this rough draft um by the end of this month so i'll let you know on the next podcast um i hope you're enjoying this you can reach me at dark at gmail.com if you want to send me an email and uh, now on uh, Facebook as well. So um, if you are on Facebook and you uh, look up Dark Gravity um, or Brian Cantrell, um, hopefully you can uh, find me on there and we can become pals. And uh, uh, once again, I hope you're out there and uh, you live a little bit of the pirate life. And uh, I'll be talking to you again real soon.